and it's it's a very simple thing. Um, there's nothing fancy about it, and I think that that's another um, important lesson because he's a very simple guy. He doesn't do any kind of you know discounted cash flow models or anything like that. He's for decades he just says I want a 15% day one return on my investment, and I want it to grow from there. Ta da! And that the difference from a model is it would not add the quarters up and it would not project anything into the future, nothing. So that's, you know, in other words, he looked at what had been reported and he said they've earned, a million, you know, they've had a million in sales, they've earned, you know, this many thousand, I want this much, they've earned this, I want this, can they do it? Yes, no. That's the decision. And the margin of safety, I mean, there's a saying, um, let me call it to mind, I think it's from the intelligent investor that um, the margin of safety, the purpose of the margin of safety is to re render forecasts unnecessary. Now here's, here's another point of departure from what almost anybody else would do. Everybody that I know um, or knew as an analyst would have created a model for this company and would have projected out its earnings and would have looked at its return on investment and da 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 in the future. Um, Warren didn't do that. In fact. In going through hundreds of his files, I've never seen anything that resembled an, a model. What he did is he did what you would do with a horse. He figured out the one or two factors that could make the horse succeed or fail, and in this case it was um, sales growth and making the cost advantage continue to work. And then he took all the historical data, quarter by quarter, for every single plant. He got the similar information as best he could from every competitor they had and he filled pages with little hint scratches of all this information, and he studied that information, and then he made a yes-no decision. He, he looked at it, they were getting 36% margins, they were growing 70, over 70% 70 a year on a million of sales. So those were the historic numbers. He looked at them in great detail, just like a horse handicapper studying the tip sheet, and then he said to himself, I want a 15% return on two million of sales. And then he said, yeah, I can get that. And he came in as an investor. Okay, so what he, had, what he did is he incorporated his whole earnings model and compounding discounted cash flow into that one sentence. I want 15% on two million of sales. Why 15%? Because Warren is not greedy. He always wants a mere 15% day one return on investment, and then it compounds from there. Dollars of sales was pretty simple too. It, was, it had a million, it was growing 70%. There was a big margin of safety built into these numbers. It had a 36% pr profit margin. He said, I'll take half that. Uh, and he ended up putting $60 million, uh, or, I'm sorry, $60,000, I'm thinking in more modern terms, he ended up putting $60,000 of his personal non-partnership money into this company, which was about 20% of his net worth at the time. He got 16% of the company's stock plus some subordinated notes. Uh, and the way he thought about it was really simple. It was a one-step decision. He looked at historical data and then he had this generic return that he wants on everything. It was a very easy decision for him and he relied totally on historical figures with no projections. I think that that's a, a really interesting way to look at it because I saw him do it over and over uh, in different investments. So what happened? Well, uh, the company changed its name to Data Documents. He owned the investment for 18 years. He ended up putting another million dollars into it over time. It was bought out by Dictograph in 1979 and he earned a 33% compounded return uh, over the 18 years that he owned the investment. So it was not too bad. Uh, and that was, that was typical. Um, I give you this example in part because it was the other time besides Geico that he got uh, a Phil Fisher type growth company at a Ben Graham like price. It was the most vivid example of that that I found. Um, always the first thing that Warren thinks about. And so why is Berkshire Hathaway today not dealing with some of the problems uh, that other people are? It's because Warren passed on investing in a lot of things that he could have because the first question he always asks himself is, what's the cat risk? And if the business or investment has cat risk, then he just says no. And we could probably get into an interesting discussion about some things like AIG. Um, that was a stock that I was wrong on for a long time until I finally turned around. But you know, he never invested in AIG because of the cat risk. 
People brought in Bear Stearns and Lehman, and he never invested in them because of the cat risk. And he saves himself a lot of time and energy this way. Because if you ask yourself the cat risk question first, then you don't have to do any of the other work. All those pages of numbers, historical data. So because Warren is basically focused on efficiency, you know, that's why he does that. And he's also very good at uh, being realistic. And once he figures out that something does have the cat risk, he never ever kids himself and tries to talk himself out of changing a decision.